All right, Venetian blinds. <clears throat> um, let's just get stuck right into it, and I will explain the concepts behind Venetian blinds in due course. So it's it's moody. Um, it's sort of influenced by this sort of filmic, uh, sort of eighties noir type. Um, I have the mental image of like a stakeout or like watching a watching a non-violent crime happen, like a like a like a like a ransom or like a like a class A drug deal, you know, from a from a New York apartment. This kind of like peering, um, hence Venetian blinds. You know this this trope of, of someone sort of peering through Venetian blinds um, but it's kind of got this sort of um, Brian De Palma, Michael Mann sort of action movie stakeout sort of detective mystery thing going on but also sonically there's a lot of um, influences from um, at the time a lot of modern hip hop had you know, in, in 2015 had a lot of um, synths and weird production like DJ Mustard and stuff and that comes up a bit later on in kind of trap music um, those are trap hi-hats just on their own now the uh, interesting thing is that right up until the last minute um, it had a drum track But for me, that 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 made the whole tune way too way too sort of steady. And it wasn't until I'd actually um, heard it in the context of the album where I realised that beat was sort of too strong. With the beat, you don't hear enough of the development, you don't hear enough of the tension, you don't hear enough of the, the sort of filmic, like that much better, that the pulse is carried by all the instruments sort of coming in and out. Ah, uh, this, this is actually a quote from, um, can I still do it? Yes. Now, the M1 VST, which is all over this record, um, every track is either Wave Station or M1 or occasionally Helene 1 um, there are this, this preview function so you can play this with any any patch instead of instead of playing live keys into it you've got all these preview riffs um, where is and I'm sure one of these is Maybe not. Oh no, I know what it is. I know what it is. There's actually, there's... Hang on. That's all gone crazy. There is a sequence patch. That's right, it's a sequence patch. Can I find it quickly? It's one of the most... Is it this one? That's right. So this is a sequence patch um, that has, like the wave station, uh, there's an internal sequence inside the M1 somewhere. I don't use it, but you can use this to to um, to have a a patch that'll play a sequence when you hold down one key. So that unison detuned synth is actually playing a quote of that patch, I just sort of figured it out by ear. Yeah, I sort of mistakenly um, pressed the sequence, uh, the sequence patch while I was trying to figure out what to put on top and when that came through I was like, oh, I know I know, I need to, to put this into the song and to sort of quote this because it's, it's something really cool. Um, What happens with that patch though is that it's hocketed between all of these different patches. 
So one's panned hard right, one's sort of panned hard left. Two up in the center. And that's got a kind of like uneasy, where am I looking? You know, kind of darting, um, darting vision to it that, that the kind of the listeners sort of taken sort of around all these different um, places in the stereo field. And that happens as a form um, of kind of closure on the, on the outro. So those are made actually pretty easily with the um, Nuendo um, sequence of mute tool. You can just mute on a uh, mute notes on and off. So it's just it's just um, duplicated between these, and then just muted and unmuted. And the mute tool actually just flips anything that's muted becomes unmuted, and vice versa, which is really cool. So there's a big um, a big use of this idea that you du for me that you duplicate something and then you alter it or you use the duplication as a way of kind of process um, to build an idea uh, a lot of the a lot of the tracks and a lot of the songs on by now are actually there's, there'll be an echoed version that's a duplicate that plays afterwards so instead of automating the echo you just can you can infinitely duplicate any of these plugins so it's suddenly it's boundless you know you can you can have a whole process that involves duplication muting truncation um delay this kind of sort of recursive process which is really really fun because you just play it back and listen to it we, we can invert all of these if we just Just run the mute tool over it and it'll just invert whatever's currently muted and unmuted. So that's that melody based on the the sequence. As you heard that hay sample which is off some old sample cd i don't can't actually figure out which one it is but i had not included it as the original sample like i have with chit chat um for copyright reasons but this um hay sample is put in there to um to build an effect of a hay chant like this but then sort of rebuilding it with well very loosely with just a, a sort of metal hit and this is kind of that trap music sort of play the I mean the the drums not maybe but the hi-hats and the hay is kind of a trappy sort of and that gives gives it quite a lot of good tension um, and this this idea that I'm sort of taking from two disparate worlds is it's kind of like cheap synthesizer sort of noir film music mixed in with a kind of trap um, composition there's a lot of controller lanes there this this pitch bend inflection I do it all the time and there's the mod wheel so the vibrato increases and then there's a little sort of lick of pitch do that all the time in Disaster Radio and Eyeliner every time if I can put a little pitch inflection in it's probably from learning how to play guitar as, as a kid um, then and this is kind of this for me this sort of 20, 2014 to 15 modern hip hop DJ Mustard type um, vibey thing um, we put we go straight into a trance arpeggio it's like typical trance hoover So short 30 second notes and then a long one. Those are just on octaves. Yeah. 
And this is cool because it sounds like a, it sounds like a, um, a climax without, without rhythm. It's just, it's just like a, it's sort of an empty, um, an empty climax, which f fits the mood for me beautifully for this kind of tense, tense sort of mood. And then we head back into this kind of metal hit based on that hay chant. section like I talked about before. You yeah, probably the the winkiest thing I do in this is that um this brass this is a split patch for doing drums and brass. Um, it's an M1 all in one, but these kind of like cheesy, winky kind of um, horn stabs that have this sort of pitch bend, they're, they're very sort of sleazy. And you can actually hear there's really low resolution with these pitch bend um, messages. I wouldn't have done it this, this kind of... Um, can just redraw it temporarily. If I do it at 164th, it would sound way smoother, but this is kind of ham fisted amounts of it should be a bit more like this. But I like that you can hear the you can hear the pitch stepping up and down. So this is the pitch bend controller. You've got up and down pitch and usually the top top extent is plus two semitones and the bottom extent is minus two, but it just depends on what the assignment is on the other end. You've got this kind of really languid sort of weird pitch pen that sounds a bit more like sort of chip tune or like the pitch pitch effects on like a Commodore 64 timing or an uh, NES or something like that but I just love those those brass stabs are just super sleazy super hammy but it's that kind of noir like steak out like you know um it reminds you of like body double or something, these kind of, you know, cheesy sleazy movies. Also the wood vibe, again, it's like this music box um, passage of time. This sounds like time. It's like a ticking clock. It's got like a... Phoenician blinds. I don't know where the original. Um, oh, we we probably got it from Chord Space actually. The um, the original um, harmonic. Because you basically got two chords, and then three in the um, three in the B section, an A section of these two chords stepping up. Then the B section, and then the A section, then the A section an octave lower, and we're out. So it's very very sim simple in terms of harmonic development. But we can see if chord space keyboard has the root still in there. I may have moved the root so that wouldn't, it may be slightly irrelevant, but we shall see. Oh no, this sounds like it's in. F minor A flat. I 
Strafe minor. And you're A flat. Yeah, so I, I, I would have written this with chord space by the looks of it, but the key's all wrong because it looks like my home key's more, more like F minor. But so we think we're in B flat, but we're starting on five. What, whatever it is, I don't know too much about functional harmony, but that's, I know it's slightly off. Um, so yeah, this was the original idea would have come out of this getting progressions out of this this um, keyboard, which I've shown in previous songs. Um, but yeah, a four note chord, tetra chord, sevenths and ninths based jazz type um, framework for chords and the substitutions for each for each Roman numeral on the scale degrees. So in addition to having like B flat minor, you have E7 and it just means that you can click and you can get cool chords coming out of it and you can have a play and that's the idea. Um, so yeah, that's Venetian Blinds.